Hey guys, I'm Willie Sandry. Today we're going to be building this Craftsman style picture frame. It's got custom matting and we're using this suggested artwork. It's a Paul Lanquist print and that's the design we've come up with and we've got our trusty shop dog trooper to help us out today. So stick around, we'll check it out. Okay, to get this project started, you want to pick out some lumber. I've always got a lot of these pieces where I was trying to get three quarter inch thickness and I didn't quite make it. So dig through your lumber pile and if you have some pieces that are a little bit thin to be three quarter, those will make perfect stock for your styles which are actually only five eighths inch thick. So we'll go ahead and uh, finish playing these and rip them to width. Okay, we'll rip the styles down to size and they're two and a half inches wide. You want to make sure to cut those from the five eighths thick stock. Okay, so we've got our flip stop set to 21 inches here. We'll go ahead and square one end and then cut this lower rail to length. So we'll reset our length stop here to 22 inches. Don't let that trip you up. The top rail is actually an inch longer than the bottom rail. Once we're set to 22 inches there, we can go ahead and square an end and make our cut. So the styles also need to be 22 inches long. When you're done, hang on to the offcuts because they make really useful test pieces for determining the tenon thickness. Okay, so we'll go ahead and lay out the mortises on the top rail and the bottom rail. Just create a center line and everything works off of the center line. The mortises are two inches wide and they need to be spaced about 14 and a half inches apart. So we'll finish laying those out now and then it's off to the mortiser to create these quarter inch wide mortises. It's important to note that the mortises are not centered in the thickness of the three quarter inch stock. They actually have to be offset because the other parts of the frame are thinner at only five eighths. So what we'll do is we'll set the mortises based on the back of the picture frame and they need to sit 3 16 from the back and then it'll be a quarter inch wide mortise. Okay so we've got our mortise locations all laid out. We'll just go ahead and cut that with this hollow chisel mortiser. This is a quarter inch bit. So now we've switched to the top rail of the picture frame. Remember to reset your depth of cut so that you're still only cutting a mortise that's one inch deep. With the dado blade set up on the table saw, grab one of your off cuts from the style piece. These were planed to the same 5 8 inch thickness as your actual project work piece. These will make great samples for establishing the thickness of the tenon. So usually with mortise and tenon joints, we cut the mortise first. The mortise is king and we just size the tenon until it fits. I can see I need to raise my blade a little bit, so we'll have another pass at it. Just incrementally raise the blade 
until you've got a tenon that fits snugly in the mortise. So now obviously this tenon is still too wide because we haven't cut the shoulders yet. But if you just nestle one corner of the tenon into the mortise, we can see that that's a nice fit. Got a little bit of friction holding it in place, but it's not too tight that we can't easily assemble it. So if the width on the tenon comes out about right, this sample board should fit nicely into our project piece. And we see that the width of the tenon was just the right size. So we'll go ahead and cut those on our real project styles. One thing to notice though, these tenons are offset. So at the back of the frame, the boards will be flush. At the front of the frame, you'll have a nice decorative offset. And that's exactly what we're going for. Okay, so one other little job we need to take care of while we have the dado blade on the table saw is to cut the groove that will receive these little walnut inlay cards on the top rail. So to know how deep to cut that shallow little dado, just insert a style into the top rail and with a sharp pencil, mark the offset here. That'll be your guide when you're setting the blade height. So set the rip fence so there's two inches between the fence and the dado blade and turn your top rail on edge. We'll set this in position and we'll make the first pass of this shallow dado. And then we'll turn the top rail around and repeat that same cut on the opposite side without any adjustments to the fence. Then reset the rip fence until the dado blade aligns with your mark. So now with a thin strip of walnut, we'll cut that to an inch and 9 sixteenths wide, or more precisely, till it exactly fits the width of our dado. So just a little bit of fine tuning with a hand plane to get those walnut card inlays just the right width so they'll slide into the dados. You can tell your hand plane's doing a good job if you get these fine, wispy looking shavings. All right, let's check the fit. There we go. Now these walnut inlay cards slide right into the dado with no slop and they're not too tight. That'll glue into place just right. Okay, so we know from our plans that we need to keep two and three quarters. That amount of the upper rail remains, so we'll need a mark there on either side. And then we also need a center mark. And from that center mark, we just need to strike a line so that we have our angled shape that we'll be able to cut out at the bandsaw. We'll also use a little bending form here to strike a fair curve on the bottom edge of the frame before we head over to the bandsaw. There we go. This is just a thin piece of hardwood that's laced with a piece of ruby twine. It's knotted on one side 
on the other side it's just a friction fit so that you can adjust the curve to whatever you need. Works pretty good. So we've got a couple shape parts to make and the bandsaw is a perfect tool for that. There's the curve along the bottom rail and then the angled shape across the top rail of the picture frame. So we'll go ahead and get the bandsaw tensioned up and make those cuts. there comes a turning point in every project and I think this is it. The frame is starting to come together. We've done some final sanding here and it's ready for permanent assembly so we'll start gluing it together. My normal process is to put most of the glue inside the mortises and you can be pretty clean with this assembly. It doesn't have to have a terrible amount of uh, strength. It's just a picture frame but a bit of glue in each mortise and then a little bit on the tenons and we should be ready to assemble this picture frame. And then if you keep your cutoffs from the top angled piece that's a good way to align the clamping pressure as you assemble things. Otherwise it's hard to get good bearing on this angled surface but if you just use your cutoffs why then that's a great way to get good square clamping pressure to evenly close the joints. Okay, so now it's time to route the rabbit around the inside of the picture frame to house the glass and the matting for the artwork. When it comes to a router, the rule of the router is counterclockwise, end grain first, unless you're inside of a frame. In this case, it's clockwise. So we'll make a first pass in the normal clockwise direction, and then we'll make a very light climb cut in the opposite direction for extra clean results. We'll get the safety gear on and make the cuts. So this is the rabbiting bit that we're using. The diameter of the bearing determines how wide the cut will be. And for our first pass, this is a quarter inch setup block will be somewhere around half of that for our first pass. Okay, so with a wide chisel we'll start to clean up these inside corners to make room for the glass and artwork. Once I have scoring lines established, I usually switch over to a smaller half inch chisel and then just quickly pare down to your line. Doesn't take long to clean up an inside corner. Of course it helps that the router did most of the work. Okay, so I think we're ready to glue these little walnut inlay cards in place. If they're a little bit tight, just touch the edges with a sanding block. Shouldn't take much. And you do want to go light with the glue here. Um, it's really not a structural element. This is just for looks. And so don't go overboard with the glue. Get a little bit on both surfaces. 
and that should be just fine. We'll set those inlay cards in position and clamp them in place. Okay, we'll get the other one glued in and set that aside to dry. Finally, we'll mortise out these quarter inch square holes for the decorative pegs to finish off the frame. I'm just using a double layer of mat board, poster board. And so just put that over the peg as you drive it in and you know you won't go too far. Okay, just like that. For more information on Paul Lanquist prints, finishing and hardware for this project, check out my YouTube channel, The Thoughtful Woodworker. Thanks for watching. Trooper, high five. Good job. <laughs>